just to let you know, most of us are are um, finished with the creating of the 19 documents. And so we're finalizing them. Um, and only one of us has had, had it recorded. Okay. So we're on the process of getting it recorded. And some of us have started phase two and have questions now about mail mailing it. You know, okay. Any phase two and and putting together ma the mailing lists and and uh, the cover letters and things of that sort. Okay. Well, I have some good news about the mailing list. So we'll go over that too. Great. Okay. Thank you. We're on the mailing list. needles. Okay. So let's go ahead with the first question. It's considering the copyright and the trademark, and that's through the copyrightdepot.com that addresses the fictitious name in the summary section. What question do you have with that? The, um, we were in the process before of doing a DBA with the DCCA, and uh, you informed us that the D, uh, the um, we that would bring us back into the jurisdiction. So you had a different way of wording uh, the fictitious name or doing yeah. something else with it. Yeah, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the Minnesota, and that's where we're going to do our DBA with our name. So. I could walk you guys through that process now if you want, or we could do that on a particular call. In fact, we should probably set up, when's, when's the next time you guys are meeting? Monday, maybe. Monday? So let's say, why don't we, oh, Monday, not Monday. Uh, Thursday, I could do a call and we could, literally be all on our computers and i could walk you through the dba process on the minnesota website what How's time that? can would everybody make thursday yes so let me put this down so thursday at 12 30 hawaii time hawaii time yes will uh, you Dr. Mary, will you also be covering trademark? Yes. We, yes, we can do that. Okay. Okay, so the second one is once we have the copyright trademark, uh, the, sig sig the symbols, should it appear in each document for all phases? Absolutely. It should be on all of the documents from here on out because you guys have copyrighted it in your phase one you have copyright and trademarked on one of the documents in your phase one i don't remember the name the number of it but it's the copyright and trademark document so once that gets recorded you guys are solid with that what we're doing with copyright depot is just putting it out there in the universe to 271 countries so there's never a question as to are you really copyrighted we will be once we record them because once you put anything into the public record it's a solidified done deal it's a contract but we're going on question but we're going on copyright dot, uh, dot com that just puts it out there in 271 countries. You are worldwide. So there's never a hesitation or a question. It's just kind of re reconfirming what we're doing. Okay. Quick question. Yeah. Quick question. So is that only are all caps or is it any variation? Is it the, the natural name as well as the all caps name? Yes, because you are copywriting your all caps name, which is the corporation, right? Correct. The all cap, the debtor is giving the creditor authority to run the business now because the creditor has the arms and legs. So we have to copyright the creditor as well. And you would do that before you put 
family last because the last name is not for you to copyright. That is our family name. So that would be our father's last name, right? So it's not our name at all. We can't claim that. It's the family name. So how it would be written would be the first name, upper and lower, hyphen, the middle name, all lower, and then copyright and trademark. Then you would then go the colon. and then you would go colon, family, and then your last name, upper and lower case. Some people are making a mistake by putting the copyright and the trademark after the last name. Mm. But we cannot because that is the family name that doesn't belong to us. The only reason why we're copywriting the all caps last name is because that's what the corporation created for you. Right? So we're taking back ownership of what they stole from you. So we're taking, we're making sure that we copyright that. That's just like having the name McDonald's right there. And nobody else could use that name, right? Without getting in trouble. So it's the same way for your all caps name. They could get in trouble by using your all capital first, middle, and last. Because once you legally put that on the record in the county and you file that, that's a done deal. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Do You're we welcome. always have to have the word family in there? No, you do not. The colon actually represents that word family. So if you just wanted to do the first middle colon, and then your last name is absolutely perfectly perfect. That works too. Some, yeah, some people like to have family in there and some choose not to. So it really becomes a preference. However you use it, you wanna use it throughout your documents, be consistent, okay? There's another way to handle this. In the beginning of each document, you could say, first, middle, copyright, trademark, colon, family, last, and then comma, first, middle, comma, first, middle, copyright, trademark, colon, last. Any variations of this name should be accepted. Just like on a mortgage, they give you variations of definitions, right? This is your documents and you get to dictate how they're supposed to read. Does that make sense? Perfect. Yes. Yep. Yeah. So anytime you see any variations of this name, it's a given that doesn't matter if they turned it upside down or wrote it backwards. It's any variations of this name must be accepted. And I wouldn't put it past them to write it backwards and upside down. Right. <laughs> okay. Number three, a standard way of writing our address and zip code that leaves us outside the jurisdiction. The only thing you have to remember about staying out of their jurisdiction is not getting mail at a mailbox at your home. The minute you receive mail at your home, you are in their jurisdiction. That's why a third party address is so critical. Okay. Is that like even just junk mail that shows, sorry, even junk mail that shows up? Yeah, because you're allowing their jurisdiction to enter your private property. Okay. So that doesn't take you out of their jurisdiction. If you have a mailbox, in the front of your house, you are in their jurisdiction. So if you don't want to be in their jurisdiction, you need to remove the mailbox out in the front. Oh, wow. What if I have tenants 
can I put a second mail, like a mailbox only for them and not my name on it? If you own that house, yeah, then you are still in their jurisdiction. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So for tenants, it's always a good idea to tell them that they'll no longer receive mail here. They need to get a address at the post office or something. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So watermark, number four, it says watermark. Mary said the watermark goes on all documents in phase one. And sample on 17, which is the affidavit of tax exempt foreign status. Are there any exceptions such as the fee schedule where it could appear at the top of each page replacing the image? Yes, the image that's on the tax exempt foreign status no, excuse me, that little, it's an eagle. That is on the fee schedule. You could replace that eagle with your watermark. Okay. Remember that the watermark could also be a logo. It could be a stamp. You can create that logo that was designed for you in many, many ways. So there's times where I'll use my logo as a watermark behind my documents. And then if I have a big space on the bottom of my document, I will put my logo, which is the same as the watermark, in color on the bottom of that document, right? To make it look nice. I'm just creating a real nice look on a document there's some of the pages that are maybe half full and half of the documents empty. And if I see that, I kind of want to balance it out. So I will take my logo and I'll do it small on the bottom in color. So it's really like stands out like that eagle on the fee schedule. Okay. How do I? I recommend the watermark on all the documents because that is letting them know who I am. If I don't put a watermark or my logo on that document, they, those documents look like everybody else's, right? So it's distinguishing who you are. They can look at your logo and know a little bit about you because remember they're not going to be meeting you all they are going to know is when you submit that paperwork to the government that's all they're going to know about you so it's absolutely critical when we send those in especially to the ones that i have highlighted that we don't have any cat hair on it or coffee stains or wrinkled paper or you know you want that package to look pristine just like who you are. You want it to represent exactly where you're coming from. Okay. So that's really, really important. B, the indemnity bond, does it get watermarked? Never a bond will ever have a watermark on it because of all of our bonds go in a special spot. They all will be printed on a laser printer the reason for the laser printer in color is because that ink from the laser is the only ink that will last a lifetime. Regular toner fades. So that's why it's so important on the indemnity bonds and the answer is no for watermarks. Number C, the affidavit of ownership, photo and footprint on back. What is the question with that? Do we put it on the affidavit of ownership? Yes, absolutely. Yes. Okay, and five is more important, or uh, more information about the mailing process to the 30 officials plus two for us. I love that. We just found out just recently 
that any of those 30 entities that you guys have the list of have a direct, listen to me clear, really closely, has a direct email address for that particular person, you have the right now to email them those documents. No longer will you have, yeah, it's a big plus. <laughs> They're getting way too much paper. They don't know what the hell to do with it. So now if it's on email, it's as good as going through the USPS federal system. And as long as that person, you have to address them personally, right? In email. So if the federal marshal, his name is Frank Love, make sure that email goes directly to Frank Love, not to the business or the corporation. It has to go to his desk. Okay. So that was just incredible news because that's going to save us so much money on mailing. Yeah. Mary, quick question. What's that uh, phrase you use for in case that person changes jobs than the next one? Fiduciary. Yeah. No, it would be so if it was Frank Love or successors. Oh, I thought it was a different. I thought it's yeah, no, because, yeah, no, if he is, say, you know, in between the time you mail it or email it, he gets kicked out of his position, then it would be his assigned successors. Okay. okay. That would be important. So, yeah. So think about this, you guys. You won't have to make 30 copies of everything, right? Yeah. You can use the bundle and email that over and over again with just a different cover letter, right? So it's gonna save you so much. Maggie's gonna be pissed. I know. <laughs> but that is gonna save so much money and time, really, because we'll be able to use that same set of documents over and over and over again. The only thing that we will need to change, of course, is that cover letter, right? Every person will have their own cover letter because it has their name and their address on that. Okay. Has anybody started to gather the email addresses, the personal email addresses? No, no. But that could be, you know, you give assignment to the group here, you know, somebody takes 10 and Next takes the next 10 or something, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so more information about the mailing process. So that was great news. The indemnity bonds has the first register mail number in the, in the property list. Yes, and I'm thinking that's a question. So the indemnity bond in phase one <clears throat> has a register mail number on it, right? <clears throat> Yep. That register mail number needs to be listed in your property list. So you need to have, I would say, minimum 30 register mail numbers on that property list. Okay, because those numbers, once you record them at the county office, those numbers are registered to you. Wow. Yeah, they become yours. If you don't have them yeah, recorded. Because I, oh, I, I always ask myself, you know, we, we're going to put the registered numbers on those documents. And then I'm thinking to myself, do we have to mail them so we can get it recorded? But now you're saying we just do it to recorder's office and boom, it's all done. Well, yes, except for the fact. Now, Janet Yellen will be the only one that you will need to send it register mail to. You won't, even though she may have an email address. And the only reason for that is, is because she is the one that registers all of your bonds, right? And anytime you send a bond, must, must, must go out registered mail, okay? So even if she does have an email address, we still have to send hers out registered mail. 
the register mail number that is on that indemnity bond is the same register mail label that you will be putting on Janet Yellen's package. Okay. So technically we don't need the 30 because it will only need a registered mail if we don't have a personal um, email for the addressee. Right. And the only ones that have to go register mail are the ones that are highlighted in the federal addresses and the state addresses. In blue. In blue. Those are the only ones that have to go registered mail. Now, those others that other than Janet's will have its own registered mail number, right? And then on the indemnity bond, I, you must, you must remember this. It has to have the word copy going across that indemnity bond to anybody else. Otherwise, it could get securitized 30 times. <laughs> right? With your signature. So it's very important that once you send Janice out, she gets the original of everything, right? Then you're going to take that indemnity bond and you're going to put it in through your Microsoft Word and you're going to put it, go to the watermark area and you're going to put a watermark on it and it's going to say copy in red diagonally across that paper. BJ, is that clear? Um, okay. So the, we send I out. I love this because the, I can see your expression, mail. whether you I'm did sorry. it or not. I did. I love <laughs> it. Uh, I, I believe I understand it. So, okay, let me just repeat it. The indemnity bond goes to Janet Yellen and it goes registered mail with that first registered mail number. That's on the indemnity um, bond, yes. That whole package, right? Yes. That whole package is with that, uh, but the number is definitely on the indemnity bond. And it's also on uh, the phase two um, documents um, that where it re where we it's required to put. Yes. Bond number, okay. Same number. So that, that whole thing, plus the, the couple things that in phase two uh, letters go with Jan, that go with Janet Yellen um, are in this package and it has to go, the whole package has to go with the social security number intact yes. to Janet Yellen. Correct. Uh, uh, okay, once that's done, every, we go back to that, um, uh, you know, our, indemnity bond page and we put copy in red uh going side uh, diagonally and all the rest of the 29 plus it, well i don't know plus the two for us say copy you want to have two originals for you so okay. so I ours will, will will look colored and it won't say copy that's correct the two that goes to us Okay. Yes, you will have two originals with you, and the originals Everybody, will have social security numbers or the the yes. last. Okay. No, they will have everything because if anybody needed to pick up your pieces, they're going to need to know everything. Oh, everything. Ooh. Yeah. Okay, that's kind of new to me. All yeah, right. that no X is nothing is X'd out for our two copies. No, because say for instance, God forbid something happened to you and somebody else that you put in charge they wouldn't know where to look for all this stuff That's they'll true. have it in your documents you'll have a complete beautiful set for them and they'll know right where to pick up so does janet yellen get a copy or she gets an original she gets an original it has to be a wet ink signature from not only the notary but you okay so are we signing 
anytime there is a notary and any oh any of the signature pages and the notary pages have there are three copies then one for janet two for us correct everybody else gets copies okay i don't think we need that because uh good thing we didn't notarize but do so that um ahava you don't have that because you registered your you you recorded yours so everybody gets copies so you're going to take one of your masters after you uh get rid of your, some of your personal information on it you will take one of those and that would be the one that you copy and hopefully everybody's got email addresses which would be a savior and you can email one set to everybody the only thing you'll need to do is have 30 different cover letters or excuse me probably uh, 28 different cover letters right because they're going to have their own address on it and it is specifically to that person okay that, okay okay I, so, uh, well, that's later on the, about the cover letter number 10, so we can cover it then. Okay. So then it says original indemnity bond goes to Yellen at the Secretary of Treasury. Yes. And the other two copies of the indemnity bond go to where? Us. One and you. Us and one for a package that's not opened so that we can have it for somebody else. Right. Whoever you want to appoint. Okay, then D is complete SS number for Janet Yellen only. That is correct. And the rest show XXX. That is absolutely correct. Is Janet Yellen the only exception? Yes. Nobody else will get an original. Documents are sent in register mail to those listed as blue on the address list. Great question. They do not have to go register mail. And so can somebody tell me why we don't have to send them registered mail to everybody else in blue? Because it's not financial. Thank you. Because the bond is only a copy, right? Mm hmm If that bond was an original, then we would. we would. We would have to go registered mail. But because there's no bond in there, it does not have to go. So it goes, everything I send out, I send out certified mail with a signature card. Because I like to know who has signed for this. Okay. Who gets the blue paper? Mary, What's that? So the, um, the signature card, I believe that's the uh, 3811. Um, is a digital signature okay too, or we want the hard, uh, the real signature? We want the real signature. I know they're doing alternative with that digital. Uh, if you're a good record keeper, then digital may be okay. Um, I like that hard copy because I stapled that into my firm book, you know, with all the information, and then I was able to put the date they received it. And, you know, it's just a good book of reference. But digital, I don't know where I would put it. So just something to think about. Number F, who gets the blue paper? Originally, everybody that I had highlighted got blue paper. If there, any of the ones in blue highlight, I'm going to repeat that. Anybody from the federal or state that is blue highlighted, if you could email it, the answer is no. If you have to mail it to anybody in that blue highlighted area, the answer would be yes. So I'm hoping and praying that everybody's got emails these days. I think everybody does. You know, I can't imagine them not having a personal email anymore. Okay. Does that answer that question? Great. BJ, you got that? Uh, okay. Uh, I'm 
I'm a little, com uh, I just want to verify this registered mail. Okay. So technically we're only sending three registered mail. Who are you sending three to? Um, the first one is the indemnity, bo indemnity bond, but it goes, that whole package goes to Janet and Yellen and okay. that's done by mail. And the other two are to ourself. Yes. Or no, you don't have to sit. You only send one registered mail back to you. The other one you're going to keep in your house with you wherever you keep your important papers. Oh, okay. Right. It doesn't have to go anywhere. That's right. Yeah, that's so that then, then it's only two registered mail. That's it. Unless. No, you're right. There's only two registered mail period done. The reason for that is because you're only sending one bond, right? That's your financial instrument. Anytime we send a financial instrument, it has to go registered mail. Okay, so it's not until three phase three that we have to use the registered mail. That's right. That's when we do all of the bonds. Okay. Okay. Wow. Right. This is so good. Yeah. Okay, now six, do we have to start and or complete name change before sending out our 32 mailings? No, you just need to have it in process. Okay. One, one more question about that. Um, does it, does it have, does it have to be our regular upper and lower caps name and, or does it have to be all lower caps? Because in North Carolina, we only got one chance to do this, only one. So uh -huh. I'm not sure. You know, I've been told do it all lowercase. I've been told do it upper and lower. I'm not sure now. Yeah. Politically, it's upper and lowercase. However, there is some people in the movement that love it all lowercase. So we had this discussion last week, and it's going to come down to a preference. How would you like your name for the rest of your life? Do you want it all lowercase or do you want to do it politically correct? Well, here's another thing. In my in my short form birth certificate, mm -hmm. uh, it's all upper caps. In my long form birth certificate, it's the way it's in the upper and lower. So when I do the birth the birth certificate name, I guess they're changing the short form. Is that right? I don't know what they're doing with that. All I know is that you have to correct it because even if we had upper and lower case on our birth certificate, guess who has copyrighted and trademarked your all cap name, right? So this is why we are doing it publicly and legally because well, yeah. we, we're taking ownership, right? It, it also helps that's to separate really, the two really, because you're doing it. Excuse me. Oh, sorry, Ryan, go. It's when you're doing it, the reason that you're doing the, when it says reason for the name change is you, know, one of the things you can put in there is because I'm not a corporation and to protect you from the doctrine of Edom Sonnens is so like, you're saying you're not a corporation, so it, it, it doesn't, it's not really, they're never going to correct the short form. If you get your name correction, I guarantee you get a short form, it's still going to be all caps. Wow. You know what I mean? Like, it's only going to change, it's, it's, <laughs> they don't, they don't change the short form. You just want to make sure you have that legal document of your name change and what you have asked for. Yeah, you're not asking That's for important. the change the straw man's name, you're asking them to change yours. So it differentiates between you. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. So uh, I thank you for for clearing that up because you know it was a lot a lot of talk about that. And I want to. Right. Know, thank you. Yeah. yeah. So number seven is: Does the trust need to be recorded before sending out the mailings? Are you talking about phase one and phase two? Yes. When we say mailings, the only part of your trust that needs to be recorded is those first, I believe it's five pages. Mm -hmm. Now, there's two ways that you can record it. 
listen to this. You can record it by in the county recorder's office, or you can have it recorded by putting a registered mail label on it and sending it back to your trust. So it would be from you, your upper and lowercase name, to your trust, care of the trustee of that trust. So you would take your trust documents, put it in an envelope, put a registered mail label on it, and send it back to your trust but care of the trustee. Does that make sense? So that gives you, you can do it either way. Wow. Okay. That's $21 and, cheaper. Yes. <laughs> Number eight, editing feedback on phase two document, on phase two document. I'm just saying 11. it's just missing the autograph line. Okay, if you were to look at that, would you add an autograph line or not? Uh, I would. Absolutely. Okay. Because you got to sign it, right? Yeah, and there's a yeah. jurat and yeah. Yeah, you can't have a jurat without your signature, right? Yeah. Very important. Are any of the following 8832B... 1099C, 56F, or 1040B, and 1041 included in the mailing packet of the 30 agencies, individuals? No, that is a totally different process. The only things that those agencies get is phase one and phase two. Everything in phase two and everything in phase one. Nothing is left out. Okay? So if you have a 1040 in phase two, which we do, that goes with it, right? Yes. You have a couple yes. forms in there. That has to go with phase two. And a, and a 56, but not a 56F. That's correct. 56F is for financial institutions. Some people say that's for foreign. It's not. It's for financial. Okay. 10. What about the cover letters? Not all seem to have letters in phase two. Okay, you have the uh, cover letter in phase two, right? That notice. On the top of that notice, the only thing that's going to change is you're gonna put all of those federal agencies and all of those state addresses on a cover letter. So you're going to have 30 different cover letters or, or however many it is, different cover letters, and they're going to have their own address on the top there. The document does not change except the address on the top of that cover letter. Which, which is the cover letter? I want about? you, I know you're a smart cookie, and I want you to look at your phase two documents and you tell me which one is the cover letter. I, I thought it, the first one is Board of Governors, though. No. Does that look like a cover letter? No. Okay. Look at the other documents and you tell me which one is a cover letter. Anybody? I'll give you a few minutes to look at your phase two documents. There's only a, few, oh, what, a handful there. <clears throat> oh, the, uh, the one that goes to the number two, the chargeback order? No. 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 That doesn't look like a cover letter. Tony, did you find it? Maybe you can share a screen and we can see. Actual, actual constructive, actual constructive notice. Thank you. Absolutely. That actual says board of notice, notice, though. That's what I meant, board of governors. No, let, let me see if I could share that with you guys. 
On your phase two, you have a notice document in there. Uh, Let me see here. Notice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the first document. It's addressed to the Board of Governors of the Federal Re Reserve window. Let's see here. Let's see. No, I'm I sorry. It's, it's, the, it's the pre offset notice for balanced book adjustment. Let's look at that one together. It's the pre offset notice. Oh, okay. That's number uh, 12. Okay. That is a cover letter. It's saying, Dear so and so. The enclosed statute staple securities invest uh, instruments are tendered to you for the purpose of balanced book adjustment as legal tender to lower and reduce the United States national debt. This is what we're telling everybody. We're also telling them in this cover letter who is ultimately responsible. Right? Up on the top, where it says two, where it's all yellow, that's where the address is going to change 30 times. Okay. That's it. So everything else remains the same except two. So you're going to copy and paste, copy and paste, copy and paste, copy and paste, copy and paste. Okay. Um, 30 different sheets of paper because even if we have and we get the privilege of emailing it we have to have this cover letter on the front and for people here in hawaii you don't have to use dear you can say aloha janet right use your aloha in this put some of your personal pizzazz in this you can say on the bottom, mahalo, something, yeah. So make it fun, make it yours. Now on my pre-offset letters, on the left-hand corner, you see that there's kind of a big area there. I put my logo there, my coat of arms. I put a little one right there, okay? So this letter, Did you say logo up. or coat of arms. I'm sorry, Mary, which one I'm using that word interchangeably. Mary, oh. can you see <laughs> how to share? If not, Tony knows how to share. He could pull it up. What's that? Do you, can you, do you know how to use this? The pre offset notice. No, we're talking about the yeah, share button. Share. No, she usually uses zoom. This is a little different platform, but it's pretty much the same. Mary, the share button's in the middle at the well, bottom. Yes. And then you just yeah, click on whatever you want to show us. Document, if she has that document open, all she has to do is press the share and find it on yeah, the, uh, see. find it, it it'll, it'll pull it all up and all she has to do is just click on it, that's all. Okay, let's see, let me see if I could uh, first so find it. it. Like I said, if your document is already open and you don't have a lot of windows open, <laughs> well, I'm on it'll be iPad. easier to find out. And I usually it don't. It should work. It should work. Well, I usually don't have my yeah. documents on my iPad. I kind of use that for uh, personal. Okay. So, yeah, I don't think that's going to work. Barb, BJ, you have your document. BJ, don't do you, you have that document, BJ? Oh, okay. Oh man. Yes, I do. <laughs> I don't think I don't I don't think I have it. That's why I'm asking. No, it's number twelve. You do. You do have it. Come on, I BJ, do. do it for the team. Uh, uh, okay, all right, all right. I'm gonna be I'm gonna try this. Go ahead, BJ. Uh, she's Come had out, some practice. Um, oh she's oh, getting shush, the hang of it. Shush, shush. <laughs> okay, wait, wait. Stop it. Where oh share, got it. All right. Uh, all right. You see all the other stuff that I have open. Okay. Now it must be the Microsoft. No, no. Yeah, it's the Microsoft probably. Let me see. Yeah, I got it in the uh, Word. Okay. 
Can you see it? Um, not yet. But soon. Yeah, it, ta it takes it takes a little time for it to boot up. It takes at least thirty seconds, forty five seconds. It says viewing BJ's applications, so it takes a little time. Oops! Now it just disappeared. Did you get yeah, something? Like or did I maybe that did, did I close now? Here's here's my document. So let me share it. Try to share again. Oh no! Stop. Resume. Sorry. Resume. Okay, now it says we're viewing it in a minute. BJ, on your side, it says it, it's uh, it, on the top, it says downloading. Is that right? No, it dropped it again. Wow. It asked me to re uh, resume. It. It should say at the very top, uh, preset 12, preset master. Um, and then questions to Mary on the side where I'm taking notes. Um, I'll try sharing again. Yeah, because once you uh, oh, once you share. share and you and, and you click on it, on the top, it'll say it starts. It's starting to download in a little box. Uh, mine says you're sharing Microsoft Word. There you go. That's it. Yep. And then it takes a little while for it to to boot up. It's a little work. Oh, it oh. dropped it again. I, I didn't do a thing, guys. I'm sorry. I, yeah. I, I didn't touch it. Ahava, uh -huh. you should Next have that document. Okay, let me go to my old stuff and see if I can pull it up. Hang on just a second. Um, yeah, type in pre offset notice. Okay, hang on just a sec. Well, now that I've seen it, I, I, I totally get it because I, I actually put in the Department of Budget and Finance uh, for the state of Hawaii. You know, I followed. The <laughs> and then it didn't dawn on me. I'm good. Why is it only being sent to the, the budget and guy in Hawaii right? and not to everybody else? You know, I was looking at it. And I, so, yeah. Now it makes it now. sense, right? Oh, yeah. Right. Okay. It's just a template for everyone. Well, it is the template. Yeah, right. Okay. BJ, I thought for sure you would have mastered that. <laughs> and I read the darn thing too, but I, you know, geez. Okay. You're, it is kind of embarrassing now that I see it. <laughs> Hang on. I'm trying yeah. to pull it up. I think it's coming. Hang on. So one thing I just want to point out to everybody that uh, you will need in two places in this in phase two to put your social security um, um, bank routing, you know, number in there uh, that you get from the back side of your social security card. Mm -hmm. And so that goes in this document and another document in phase two. Yeah, so, so you'll your, put a few X's, right? Like Janet will get the original with all of the numbers, but anybody else, you'll put some X's. And does it matter if it's a second copy and not the original? Well, Janet's going to get the original because it's going to be her own personal cover letter, right? Oh, I know. I mean the if we got a copy of our social security number, it has a different number than the original bank routing number that was on our original card. Do you have your original card? No, I don't. 
Yeah, okay, so just use the one that you have. Got it, okay. Just one, yeah. Oh, that was fine. Yeah, for people that have multiple Social Security cards, they'll be able to use those multiple account numbers. Okay, can you guys see my screen? It's yeah, a, it says review, preview for this type, file uh, type is not oh, supported. Shoot. Okay, that's not it. It's hang, hang on, hang on. Well, oh, if you download that. I did, I just, it's like when I go back to try to, okay, hang on, maybe it's over here. May I ask the question, why do we need to see it now? I think we've already discussed it, haven't we? And we know that that's the one to use as the template. Yes, I think you guys got it. So we don't really yeah. need to view it at this point. No. Thank okay. you. Okay, Ahama. okay, no worries. <laughs> All right, moving okay. on. So moving on, so we'll finish 10 is, um, you know, still talking about phase two. Well, can I ask so, about um, the first, that, that question regarding the Board of Governors? That, that first um, notice, uh, number the first uh, thing goes to the Board of Governors. But when I looked at the list, it, I didn't know which person was the Board of Governors. Yeah, you know, there's not, the head of the Board of Governors. There's the chief, which is the head guy. And I, so, isn't that Joel so, Powell? It could be. He still could be in that same position. Let me see here. So he's not I, on our list of federal addressees. No, but everybody's going to get a copy of that. And the Board of Governors is on your federal list. It is? It is? Which one is yes. it? Yes. Yes. The Board of Governors is definitely on that federal list. Um, can anybody identify that? Yeah, let's look at that federal. Federal addresses. Okay, so we've got internal Secretary of State, uh, Securities and Exchange, Department of Treasury, uh, Army Chief General, Special Operation Command, Social Security Office, Census Bureau, the U.S. Security and Exchange Commission, and their personal, there it is, Federal Trade Commission, and the Consumer Federal Protection Bureau, the Board of Directors. Let me let me Google that. Because I think they merged. I believe that they merged into the general. Uh, there was a deputy inspector, but let me confirm that. Biden had moved a lot of departments around. Uh, let's see. Board. Well, I think a lot of them are going to be disappearing after they got this new, uh, what's that, Dodge program? Right. With, uh, Elon Musk. And, uh, I love woo. it. I love it. It's so exciting. I hope they get rid of the FDA completely. Yes, I think they're going to. They're going to get rid of a lot of ABC places. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah. Federal Board of Governors, who is running that now? Because they merged that. It's, um, how, who is running that? I would put or assess assessors on probably every department. Uh, board of Governors. Oh, shit. Uh, let's see. Board of Governors. Supervision. Let's see who that is. Let's go. Mm 
Okay, it is Powell. He's still the head of the Board of Governors. And they merged with the Federal Reserve Board. So, in your um, federal addresses, Federal addresses. The so let's see here where he will fall into Maryland and Warbling. That would be, I think that is merging with the Federal Trade as well, but let me confirm that. So I'm going to go copy and let me see here. And um, Okay. So Lena is in charge of the staff for both the commissioners and the governors. And she is with the Federal Trade Commission. So she is the boss of the Federal Trade, uh, the um, Board of Governors. So she is the one, <coughs> oh, excuse me, on the bottom of that page. So she's going to get that, that is addressed to the Board of Governors. And then she will probably be passing that on to the necessary person. Okay. okay. Yeah. So that's that. That's about the Board of Governors. Now, who is the chair of the Federal Reserve of the United States? Is that what you're asking? Well, that that's what I assumed. Um, uh, Jerome Powell was the chair, so I was thinking that that's who it had to go to. But we address it to Lena um, Khan. Yes. And and so we're only sending we're sending the cover letter as well as that one actual and constructive um, doc notice. We're sending no. those two. No. Everybody that you are sending out, whether it's mailing or emailing, will get a copy of everything that is in phase two. Everything. Oh, all the fiduciaries and forms. Everything. Yes. <clears throat> yes. Because everybody has to know everything. What we are doing. So that way, there's no question or presumption that is in their head. They will have gotten every single document so they know exactly what you have done. Okay, so everybody is going to get everything in phase two. Everything. That's all uh, our mailings. Pardon me? Or that's all our 28 mailings, our 26 mailings. Yeah, whether they're mailing or email, right? So we might ha not have Correct. to make all of those copies. Right, because right. you're going to okay. make one master copy and email it to everybody and keep emailing gotcha. that same document, right? Except it will have its own cover, cover letter. That's the only gotcha. thing that's going to change from packet to packet is that cover letter. That's it. Gotcha. Yeah. BJ, is that clear? Um, okay. Then... 
I get the the cover letter will change. Right. But to Lena, okay, and so there'll be a wet signature for each of the 30 um, re uh, mailing recipients. Then for the actual, the number one actual and constructive notice, there is also a wet signature. So does Lena get two? Oh, a wet signature for the number one as well as her own her own um um number 12 copy lena will get a copy of everything in one and everything in two uh, i okay i'm sorry uh so the 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 document called actual and constructive notice that goes to the board of of governors everybody gets that everybody gets that there, a wet signature is required i mean you I, we have to sign that but does does lena get the a, a wet signature copy <coughs> no she's going to get a copy of that everything because so nobody say, gets the wet signature copy of number one except who well, i thought lena got it no no, she's in I, charge of but, uh, no 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 or, or, who gets that gal uh Who's going to get the wet ink Yellen? signature copy? Janet Yellen. Thank you. Janet Yellen. She is the only one that gets all originals. Okay. Our BFF. The Board of Governors. Okay, that. They think it out. Okay. The actual constructive notice is supposed to go to the Board of Governors. And there's a signature that we have on that page. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, okay, let me look at like the chargeback notice. The chargeback notice Oh, so even, okay, you're saying that even though the chargeback notice is directed to um, Mendez, uh -huh. he doesn't get a wet signature. He just gets a wet signature of the uh, pre-offset master. That's right, his cover letter. And if he has a email, he won't even get a wedding signature, right? He's going to get an email. So, but Janet will get an original wet signature of all the documents yes. in, in phase one and phase two. Yeah. And how will everybody know that? Because we've because signed it with a registered mail. Yeah. And we're letting them know that we sent it to her. Yes. So she is the ultimate boss. So if there's ever any question about, could you please track RF 269-429-524 US, whatever your registered mail number is, can you please track that and let me know if you've received the original? Wow. Is there a wet ink signature on that? Yes, there is. Got it. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Man. Wow. Yeah. I'm so glad we're talking about that. Yeah, see, they all communicate with each other. We can't send one a secret. There's no secrets. It, you know, they'll check. If they need to check, they will check. And that's the importance of that RF number that you're sending that out to Janet with. Not only is it important for Janet, but it also distinguishes your bond because that is the number that's one of the identifiers in your bond for the rest of your life that number is like a tattoo for you I was because gonna say that. yeah anytime you need to track anything that belongs to you. So that bond has five identifiers on it. And every bond that goes out, any instrument, any negotiable instrument must have five identifiers on it.
And that RE number or RF number is probably the most important one. Okay. Because it's letting them know that there's a financial instrument in there. Very important. You don't use those register mail numbers for any other reason except sending instruments. Okay. All right. So I believe that was the last questions. There are some additional questions. What is the UCC process to discharge credit cards? That's a whole phone call. And what is the nobility name process? The nobility name process is whatever your origin is, say you are Italian, you will look up nobility names from Italy. You will go on to that site and say, what are some fully skilled or whatever you want to call it, um, title of nobility names. And you're going to pick out a name that resonates with you that may mean something to you, hopefully. And then once you have gotten that title of nobility name, there is a process where we claim that name. Because the reason why we want to claim it and have a title of mobility, nobility name is there will never be a social security number on that name ever. Right? Ever. So it becomes very important. You can actually get a driver's license and a passport with your title of nobility name. And if you guys are interested in learning that process, we can have a class on that. But yes. that's something to think about for people, for everybody, but especially for ones that don't want to go by their name anymore. Ryan? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Not to point fingers, but... <laughs> yeah. So... That is a real asset for us because back in the olden days, everybody had a title of no nobility name and that's what they were just known from. And so um, I would do a little research with your history. You know, go back to where your family originated from and then look up some of the different names they have uh, female and male names, so you want to be able to cipher both. For instance, uh, I am from Italy, and what is Italy most known for? Mafia. Yes. <laughs> so the the male good. the male version of that is mafia. The female version of that is Mafusa. So my title of nobility name is Mary Regina, the Mafusa of Los Angeles. Uh -huh. So where does Los Angeles come in? It, that comes from the county where you were born. Mafusa is just the female of mafia. And Regina means high spirit, the queen of Italy. So just sort of, you know, I just did some research and that's how I came up with my title of nobility name. And you could have changed your first name, Mary, as well, if you wanted to. Correct? I could just go by Regina, Regina the Mafusa of Los Angeles. Yeah. Yeah. I chose mine. I think I told you I really like it. I've always liked the name Brianna. Yeah. Uh, and then Chevalier, it means knight in French. Beautiful. So Brianna Chevalier de Colomb, which means of Columbus, because I was born in Columbus, Ohio. Oh, yeah. say that again. That's so romantic. Mm -hmm. Brianna Chevalier de Colomb. 
Oh, I love it. I love when people speak French to me. <laughs> no, me too. <laughs> hey, Where is your you were born in Columbus, Ohio? Uh, yeah. That's where I just moved from. Oh my gosh, I don't blame you. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then of course, uh, the borrow from yourself class, uh, that's going to be a class all on its own. So we could set up maybe uh, a week from Friday. Uh, Ahava, you can kind of put whatever you want to put together for uh, a week from Friday. We can do whatever and take some time and do something that they all want to do. That sounds great. So are we, okay, are we clear about what to mail or email all in one package? I have one question about the um, Form 56. Okay. How do we sign our name and what, what, um, um, what is our title? You are the fiduciary of the one there's 156 form has your name in both areas right your all cap name is giving the upper and lowercase name the authority to be the fiduciary is that correct yes so the one to ourselves yeah yeah so who and how do you think you would sign on that form bj can somebody else answer that i know you know this I know you know this answer. Upper lowercase. Yes. And yes. As the fiduciary. And then, and then I the title is fiduciary. Yeah, because isn't that what the form fifty six is all about? Is it fifty six? Yes. Fiduciary. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Your debtor is appointing the creditor. Fiduciary. Just another hat to wear, BJ. Yeah. Okay, how about the other the right. other fifty six form fifty six is to the other um to Werfel, Mendez, Heather. Who Hill. are you point who who's pointing who to be a fiduciary on the other forms? The all caps. My estate, my uppercase estate. Is it pointing who? is appointing the, the other person, the commissioner of um, the IRS. So who do you think Service. has to sign those 56 forms? My uppercase name. BJ, I am gonna spank you. Huh? No, <laughs> no, oh. I'm gonna spank you. The fiduciary will sign that, not you. The fiduciary, when they get that 56 form, that form they have to sign because who's signing your fiduciary form? You are, right? You're right. Oh, because so they have to sign the form, not me. That's correct oh because God. it's not about you, right? The all caps is making them the fiduciary. So the fiduciary has to sign that document. Okay. Would, Makes sense. I only signed the one that I be uh, I did that, for myself. That's right. That's it. Oh, that is. So you don't need the decedent's name in there or nothing like nothing like that. No. Uh, -uh you the just decedent's social security number, identification number. Mm -hmm. We put way too much information on paper. But yeah, okay. that's it. Just who is the who is appointing the fiduciary? The fiduciary is the one that's responsible for signing that document. Just like on your form 56, your estate is appointing you as the fiduciary, right? The mm -hmm. upper and lowercase name. So you have to sign that. Wow. Does that okay. make sense? I think so. Do you have the 56 forms in front of you? Yeah, I do. I have, okay. I have words. Yeah, but yes, I, 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 I know. I know what you mean, though. Yeah, yeah. So sometimes we just kind of have to look at the form, look at what we're doing, and say, okay, what kind of form is this? Oh, it's a fiduciary form. Okay. 
Who's appointing who? And on the bottom, it says fiduciary's signature, doesn't it? Yes. So we go back to the top of the form. Who's the fiduciary? Who just got appointed? Yeah. Right? They're asking for that signature. They're not asking for the estate signature. They're asking for the fiduciary signature on the bottom, right? Mm. So if we just took a minute... Yes. To look at that, we would really figure it out, right? We'd go, oh, yeah, it's telling us exactly who's to sign this. Yeah? yeah. Thank you. Yeah. See, we're so used to just kind of getting through documents and just doing them. But if we really stop to look at it for a second, it's telling us. It really is. It's telling us. It's pretty amazing. Thank you. Yeah, we also, you're welcome. Yeah, we also have one for uh, for for Nelson Perez Mendez. Yeah. We have one for them. Yeah. So I'm just going to leave you guys with something pretty amazing. Oh, that is I, really really dynamic. If yes. somebody. Ahava, or whoever can pull this form up really quickly, I will show you something that will blow your mind, and this will be a huge dynamic shift for you. The name of the document, Ahava, are you ready? Yes. Are you with us, Ahava? She can't unmute or something. Oh, there it goes. I'm sorry. Yes, I'm ready. Go ahead, Mary. Okay. I want you to go and type in. I'm trying to get a short version of this. Um, hang on. Short version. Okay. You're going to go to the IRS website. Mm -hmm. Then I am going to, where is my, my office looks like a tornado hit it. Me too. <laughs> yeah, we're all there. We're all there. Okay. Believe me. What you're going to type in is you're going to type in 2021 mm -hmm. general general instructions for certain information returns. 2021 general informa instructions for certain information returns. I wonder if AI can, we can get AI to fill out our forms. <laughs> Maybe. I, I always, when I was asking AI about the election, because I was so nervous, they're very biased. They will not say anything about anyone. Okay. They would not speak. Um, okay. Pull I, that up on the screen. It said, well, when I put it in the search bar on the irs.gov, I wrote 2021 general instruction for certain information returns, and it says found 36 matching items displaying 1 through 10. Do we have a li okay. little get, bit more specific? Get rid of, yeah, get rid of the IRS and just keep 2021 general instructions for certain information returns. Type it in Google. All right, I am. There you go. Do you Google. end up with a Department of Treasury Internal Revenue Service form? Yes. And it's about 30 pages. 31, page, 31 pages. Beautiful. Yep, that's the one. Okay, I found it. Okay, I want you to go down to, on the left column, mm -hmm. on page one, Go down to, could you show your 
thing. Yeah, and, let, and yeah, let me go. We're gonna we're gonna read M as in magnificent. <laughs> Mm. Can you guys see the thing? Uh, we can see yes. the title. Uh -huh. Can you see so now, now the instructions? No, not okay. yet. Shoot. Um, no, I can see it. Um, general instructions for certain returns. Google, a Google yeah. search. Yeah, you just need to open it up. Okay, I'm opened up. Let me see how to get back to. Okay. M is statements to receipts, borrowers, debtors, donors, insurers. Mary? Yes. Uh huh. So for those Can you guys of you see that who page? The there we go. Okay. On page eight. So I want you guys all to look on M. Page eight. Page eight. Well, you yes. can see M there too, but. Yep. But if you scroll down to page eight, then it's M is on page eight. I don't have it on page eight. Mm -mm, I don't either. Okay. Oh, page. it's not on page eight. Eight, I have. Keep going. Uh, go, keep going. Uh -huh. It's uh, 15, I think. Okay, minus M, statements to receipts, borrowers, debtors. There you go, eight. right here. Yes, okay, stop right there. So weird. I want you guys, I want Ahava, start reading this very slowly. Okay, number M. Statements to recipients, beneficiaries. Okay. Wait, hey, wait, hang, hang on. Are we all recipients? In some way, are you a recipient? Yes. Sure. Absolutely. Okay. The next word, beneficiaries. Are all of you beneficiaries? Yes. Very good. Sure. Yep. Are all of you borrowers? Yes. Mm -hmm. yep. Yep. Are all of you have been known to be debtors? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Have we ever been classified as a donor? Uh -huh. Yes. Have you ever been an employee? Yes. yes. Have you ever been an insured? Yes. Yes. Have you ever been a participant in any way? Oh my God. Yes. I got yes. A participant. Where'd you go? Oh, I'm sorry, it moved. Hang on, I'm getting back. There we go. Okay. Have you guys ever received payment Yes. Yep. No, actually not. <laughs> yes, Since we have in some way. No uh, in your lifetime, you have. Have you ever been payers? Yeah. Yes, yeah. we have. Have you ever been a policyholder? Yes. Yep. Of course. Have you ever been sellers? Yes. Sold my car. Shareholders. Yes. Students. Wow. Transfers. Winners. Transfers. Winners. Or, look at this word, or winners on certain forms. <laughs> Where have you ever seen winners on an IRS document? Have you ever seen winners on an IRS document? I don't know. The word uh, winners? Winners. The word winners. Like I, I won. So. <laughs> it's not a word that IRS uses freely. They never say please and they never say freedom. This is your freedom to success. 
Go ahead and scroll down um, to 26 Ahava, and I'm going to tie this together real quickly. Page 26? Yeah, go all the way down to 26. And I'm going to leave you guys with something that will blow your mind. Okay, there's three pages, and 26 starts out <clears throat> up here. These on the far left are all the forms that the IRS has. Then the second line is the titles of those forms. And then what to report on that particular form and the... Um, God, I can hardly read that. It's the, uh, here, I'll make it. What does that say? That, yeah, thank you. Just a little bit. Can you guys read it better? Okay. And then the amounts to report and then to the IRS when it's due to the IRS and when it's due to the recipient. Okay. The 1042S, we're not going to go through all of these, but when you read all of these, you will see how you could claim on almost every single one of these forms. Let's do the 1042S. This is a foreign person's U.S. source income subject to withholding. Are you a foreign person? Yes. Absolutely. What to report? on the 1042S, income such as interest, hmm, dividends. Where have we had interest and dividends before? Royalties, pensions and annuities, and amounts withheld under chapter three. Go read chapter three, which is in this document. Also, distributions of effectively connected income by publicly traded partnership or nominees. Hmm, that's really interesting. Wow. That's huge. That's huge. Amount that, is that the report. one that um, was, is, is that the one that was, they were gonna replace when it was like a 10, 1041X or something they were supposed to replace it? Is this the replacement for that? Ryan, almost every one of these documents, if you sat down and read them, every one of them you will be able to claim on endless amounts to the IRS to the certain date that you need to get that form into the IRS. My partner just received $1,863 by doing these forms alone. What? Okay. If you read each one of these forms, you will see the next one, a 1097 BTC. That's bond tax credit hmm what do i need to report here tax credit tax credit hmm bond credits to shareholders hmm uh, that's interesting all we do is we come up with a receipt okay 1098 mortgage interest statement what do i have to report on the 1098 Mortgage interest, hmm, who has a mortgage? And certain mortgage insurance premiums, hmm. If we've had a house, we've had to have insurance. We've had to pay premiums for 30 years. You received in the course of your trade or business from individuals and reimbursements of overpaid interest. Hmm, that's huge. That's enormous. Mm. 1098C. Could you scroll up a little bit, Hava? 1098C. This is contributions of motor vehicles, boats, and airplanes. Hmm. All of us have motor vehicles, don't we? And we donate them by registrator. <laughs> right. Information regarding a donated motor vehicle, boat, or airplane. Hmm gross proceeds of more than 500. You report that to the IRS by the 28th and you've got your contributions back. Keep going, Ava. 
Where are you? Are you there? Ahava. Ahava. Where's you Ahava. go? Wake up. She's definitely not asleep. <laughs> I can't believe she's not sitting here listening to this because this is mind. She might be as stuck. You, um, as you go down those forms, I'm sorry, every guys. Single... I'm sorry. I had to go to the ladies' room. I'll be right. Where do you want me to go? Move down. Yes. Oh. Let's look at the 1098T tuition statements. Qualified tuition and related expenses. Who went to college? Who went to school? Did, they, did you pay any kids, any of your children's reimbursements or refunds and scholarships or grants? Hmm. Did you take your child to and from school all their life? Did you run hmm. them and get them lunch when they needed lunch? Reimbursements. Reimbursements. This is huge. Let's go to one we don't recognize. Can Let's I see to... what a template would look like to turn in or is you, this just Yeah, you pull, pull up this form and okay. look at the forms. Okay. They're all gonna be personalized for you. Look at the 1098 MA, mortgage assistant payments. Hmm, what's that about? Assistant payments paid to homeowners from funds allocated from the Housing Finance Agency Innovation Fund for the hardest hit housing markets, HFA, hardest hit fund, or emergency homeowners loan program. Hmm, can I claim on that as a homeowner? Scroll up more, Ahava. Okay. <laughs> Okay, we up, <laughs> up, or are we going up? No or... pressure, Abba. Okay, um, keep going up. Scroll, scroll, scroll. How far back can you claim, and is it, and you, you have to do it by year? You have I mean, to do it by to... year, and you have to do it up until you were born. If you don't, you're leaving credit on the table. Wow. You're leaving credit for the IRS. This 31 pages, you have got to read every single word from top to bottom. There's three pages of forms that I was reading off of. There's three pages of that and almost every single form the American people could collect on with a ballot claim. And there's only a few documents that you submit with this and it's absolutely mind boggling because it's going to tell you exactly what to do in this general instructions. This 31 pages will change the dynamics of the way that you live for the rest of your life. Right. So I'll have a go to page 29. Uh, Go Okay, so there's three pages of the forms that I showed you, and then there's types of payments below in an alphabetic list of some payments and the forms to file and report them on. However, <clears throat> it is not a complete list of all payments, and the absence of a payment from the list does not indicate that the payment is not reportable. Hmm, isn't that interesting? For instructions on a specific type of payment, see the separate instructions in the form listed. So all of these things on this list are telling you what form you need. It is absolutely mind boggling. Anything that you paid on healthcare services over the lifetime of your life, you put on a 1099 miscellaneous. Any interest income that you have accumulated over the lifetime of your life, you put on a 1099 INT. Any type of long-term care benefits, 
you put on a 1099 LTC. Any time, uh, any kind of interest or mortgage that you want to claim, you put on a 1098. Go up a little bit, Ahava, please. Uh -huh. Aha, okay. So any, uh, look at this one, education, loan interest, all the money that you put into your education from the time you started education, you get to claim that. Any type of tips, if you were a waitress, you get to claim from the time you started working as a waitress or any tips, period whether you were an Uber driver or you were just a, a greeter, whatever you were, you can create. Let your imagination just go. Vacation allowance for employee or vacation allowance for a non-employee. How many of us went on vacation that are a non-employee that we wasted money? Maybe you went on a vacation yep. last year, you spent $10,000 and you have nothing to show for it except a bunch of receipts. You can claim that on a 1099 NEC, any wages that you have earned from the time, this is labor, any wages that you have earned over your lifetime on a W-2, they're telling us what forms to use for what your needs are. Go scroll which back down a little bit. The other way, Ahava. Which the one, other, the which other one way. Would, which one would, uh, which one would, uh, when you get a, like a, a sentence uh, in jail right or whatever? There, right there. Oh, there's a perfect one. That's uh, punitive, pu punitive damages, right? Didn't they damage you? Yes. Yes, that's what would on that, the like the one, that be called? Would that that's be called 1099 sort of... miscellaneous? That's where you would put that on. 1099, look at here. It's telling you which one to put it on. 1099 miscellaneous. Okay. So say for instance, you had you were there for however long you're going to times whatever your worth is. So your worth, your daily worth is worth X amount of dollars, right? You're going to take mm -hmm. that and you're going to times it by the days that you were there visiting. And then you are going to total that on a 1099 miscellaneous. Then on a 1040 ES is where you're going to put the total amount because that is a payment voucher. And we can go over all of this in a class, but this is incredible. If your grandmother died, your dad died, your mom died, anybody died, a friend died, death benefits. You claim that on a 1099R. Hmm, nobody told me that I can claim death benefits. Interesting, right? Debt cancellation. Yep. Have any of you had any debt cancellations? Hmm, yes, of uh, course. Hmm, There's a 1099C that you do it on. Has anybody had dependent care payments? Has anybody paid you for dependent care? You do that on a W-2. Right? Has anybody ever paid rent? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. What about securities? securities? Rent, you do it on a 1099 miscellaneous. Ryan, wouldn't that be royalties? Yeah. I see royalties, I see securities. What's that say to the side of those? Uh, securities mm -hmm. under sales is real estate. How many people purchase real estate? You do that on a 1099S. Right. So you would, if, if you wanted to buy something, like you sold it. What's that? If you wanted to buy real estate, or if you wanted to sell it, 
Oh, you already sold it, I mean. Yeah, something that was in your name. 1099S. How many people um, lost days of work because they were sick? Sick pay. You submit a mm -hmm. W-2. How many people bought life insurance? Sellers investment in life insurance contract. How many of us has bought that before? You'll do a 1099 SB. How many people sent money to the state and the state refund state and local tax? You'll do a 1099 G. Yo, when are you going to do a class on this? This would be great. This is going to be amazing. How many people have had foreclosures? Here's foreclosures, 1099A, right there. This They're telling you the form to fill out, 1099A, to collect your credits. So all of this, you will do everything you want in an annual year. So say you have 10 of these for the year 2021. You will file that on a 1041, a 1041V if it's a business, a 1040 if it's just personal, and then the 1040ES. That's it. The reason why people aren't getting their credits is because they're not using the correct forms. They're telling you, please, Here's all of the forms. They're, they're like letting us know so gently. Here you go, you guys. We got it even laid out easier. If you've had damages, Ryan, damages. You're gonna do a 1099 miscellaneous for the damages that has happened. Yeah. Yeah, on and on and on. You know, um, director fees. Who's managing their estates and their trust? All of you guys are. Are you worthy of director's fees? Absolutely. You do a lot of work. BJ, you're the director of your threesome. Your threesome group there. You should be getting director fees. You file a 1099 miscellaneous. Healthcare okay. services, all our massages we're going to be getting. <laughs> yes. I mean, this thing is so broken down for you that we would have to be an ostrich with our head in the ground not to do this. Okay. This right here, this form that I just showed you will change the dynamics and financial history of your entire life. If you did nothing else, but you did this, it would be amazing. You even got moving expenses on here. Yes. How many times have we had to get in a car and move from point to point, Ryan? <laughs> this right? year, so long. Yes. It's so there you go. Military retirement. Yes. Cool. It's just, it's unbelievable mileage Everything. so you guys have fun with this form we will at some point create a class with study this form and then i will show you at some point all of the forms that you have to submit with these forms but start pulling them up and looking at them and reading this thing it's even sure. got indian gaming profits paid to tribal members <laughs> yes I'm looking, I'm looking for a team that could read this document and fully understand it and to be able to put their input in on this. And I'm looking for a team that's really Akamai that could help with uh, a group of people with this. Getting money for people. I love it. I'm already yeah. in this. <laughs> it, it's just amazing. 
Oh so gosh, attorney's fees. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it just it's unbelievable. It really, really is. I have never seen anything like this in my life. The IRS has never put out a document that has made life so easy. And we mileage mortgage interest. Yeah, I mean this this thing Tell goes me on about abandonment. Time. Does that count? Have you <laughs> been have you been abandoned? Yes. Yeah, you were. Yeah. Yes, you were, of course. <laughs> Until you discovered Look at that right there. Liquidation yeah. distributions. Can we put our birth certificate number on there? Amen. <laughs> Amen. Fry them all the way down. <laughs> Auto reimbursements for employees or for non employees. Any awards? Hmm. Awards? What kind of awards? For employees or non employees? So Bond tax credit. Icing on the cake, Mary. This is amazing. You guys study it, study it, study it, and be ready for a class coming up. But I, I need you guys to know this form inside and out. And when I say page 26, you know right where to go, okay? Mm -hmm. This form, this 31 pages is going to change your financial future for the rest of your life. And the IRS has laid it out so easy for us. We don't even have to think. Nice. Yes. Okay. All right, with that, Thank I'll leave you with us. Mary. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. And you guys have a beautiful day, and I will talk to you soon. We appreciate you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Aloha. 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 You know I'm about to be burning your phone up. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ahava. Bye, every, everybody. Yeah, this was great. We're looking forward to it again, Mary. This is awesome. Thank you. Aloha. Bye. Hello, I'm out of here. All right.